Welcome to Eternal Truth Now. I'm Elaine Haynes. I'm Carrie Haynes. We're glad you joined us on our series on healing. Um, today we're going to be talking about speak the word only. That's the um, account of the centurion soldier's servant getting healed. So first we're going to open in prayer. So Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you for this opportunity to bring your word forth. I pray, Holy Spirit, you would move upon us as we bring forth what you have given us, um, what you have shown us. Lord, it's all your word. Yes, it's Lord. all your word. Your word is life and it is power. So we ask, Lord God, that you would move through this broadcast to all the hearers. They would be able to receive your word and be engrafted into them, Lord God, and bring forth faith to do what you have called them to do in Jesus' name. Yes. Amen. So again, um, we're doing the centurion's <clears throat> servant, and um, I think you're reading the scripture, Carrie, right? Yeah, the account in Matthew chapter 8, there's also an account in Luke 7, but we're going to read the one in Matthew uh, chapter 8, verses 5 through 10, and it says that when Jesus entered into Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion, beseeching him, and saying, Lord, my servant lieth at home sick of the palsy grievously tormented and Jesus said unto him I will come and heal him mm -hmm. it's amazing just right away yeah. the centurion answered and said Lord I'm not worthy mm -hmm. that you should come under my roof but speak the word only and my servant shall be healed for I am a man under authority having soldiers under me and I say to this man go and he goeth and to another come and he cometh and to my servant do this, and he doeth it. When Jesus heard it, he marveled and said unto them that follow, Verily I say unto you, I have not found so great truth, no, not in Israel. It's a great faith. It's a truth. I, I have not found so great yeah. faith, no, not in Israel. And first of all, just yeah. uh, when I think of this, what happened here, this just sticks out to me in the Gospels. Uh, as such a, uh, I'm going to call it a plumb line, uh, just because of Jesus saying, I have not found so great a faith, no, not in all Israel. His disciples were standing there. So it's such a primer, I don't know if that's the right word, to take you somewhere where maybe you aren't mm. and uh, to try to be aligned with that and to see, you know, why, why the centurion said that and why what it was about it that Jesus marveled. He actually marveled yes. and uh, not just saying, I have not found so great yes. a faith, no, not in all Israel. Yeah. He marveled. So what what was it in this initial part? Because mm -hmm. it says that when Jesus heard it, yeah. he, marveled. he marveled. So, you know, mm -hmm. what was it that he heard that made, made him marvel? And make him say, and so, you know, this is what, again, uh, this story is so different than a, a lot of the healing uh, tr uh, stories, truths, the things that happen. Yeah, it's, it's so very different. different. It's very different. But it really stands out mm -hmm. as, a, again, as a place is, this is where I want to be because it, it's something that I don't realize. You know, what What strikes me when I, when you were talking about, we went for a walk this morning, we were talking about this, the great, what caused the, what happened, how did he get that great faith? He heard about all that Jesus did. He recognized that he had authority. He recognized that, that he, whenever he spoke over someone, that they received healing, that they received deliverance. And the reality is that the, the word, you know, he heard the word. He heard other people speaking the word of truth, of who Jesus was and what he could do. And he believed it to the extent that, you know, he, you don't even need to, come into my house you just speak the word yeah and you have such authority in your word and what you carry and who you are you've been given he's been given jesus told us that he's been given all authority and power and so the fact that he can speak with authority from any distance receive that for yourself today from any distance that he doesn't have to be there right now to lay hands on you right although he if he is great right and if he appears to you or something and you receive, I got saved. When I got saved, he appeared to me and I received healing. He touched me. And the, so that's, but that's a kind of a rare thing. The reality is that you can speak the word only 
and receive your healing. That's what it set basically says here. And, you know, so... Let, let me just say something. Yeah. And we were going to bring this up later mm -hmm. about... Because I'm looking at, at the text. Yeah. And he says... Uh, the centurion, what he said that made Jesus marvel was that for, again, he did hear about Jesus, like you, you're saying, for I am a man under authority, right. having soldiers under me. So he he had a revelation of authority right. uh, that exists, that just exists in this world, in the spirit yeah. world, certainly. But, uh, and as point. we, yeah, as we were talking point. about this, yeah. I... And again, I'm going to share this now a little bit because in my life I ran away from authority. Mm -hmm. And what make when I say that I I think it's because of my 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 relationship with my dad. Perhaps you know he was. Uh, I won't go into that now. And we all have a story that could be similar to that. But uh, in the course of my life, I I at many times I balked mm -hmm. at being under authority or respecting it or doing it or understanding that this is kind of how it works if, if you will and uh, you know I grew up growing up in the in the 60s where there was that real anti-establishment mentality that started coming into the world and I think I took that on and uh, so yeah, I, there's an independent rebellious spirit that we have to fight against you know because you know in this in I'll just say it in our culture for one thing right self-made men um, I'm going to do it my way. All that kind of thing is not kingdom. And it's not the reality of Jesus' authority, God's authority. It's not that reality. This is the truth, though. That This reality is the truth, that God has all, he created all things for his pleasure, right. for his glory, right? And it's not our authority. It's his authority. In the world, yes, you have authority in different, in different capacities, right? But we're talking about in the kingdom that Jesus has been given all authority, and all power and all authority, Matthew 28, 18, and and he's with us, so he's given us authority. We're kind of getting away from ourselves here, but you know there there is the reality of Jesus's authority. And if you have not come under the authority of your starting with your parents, right? If you didn't honor their authority, if you didn't honor your teacher's authority, if you didn't honor the workplace authority, you probably have an issue with authority now, right? So I just pray that you will be able to, that that would be broken off of you right now, that rebellious independent spirit, because you, you've you seen and tasted and seen of the Lord, that yeah. you know his authority. If you're born again, you know his authority because you are you got saved. So you recognize that he has that authority and power to do that, to, to, to for God to transfer you out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of the Lord Jesus Christ, that that's been done. So now that's the authority of God. That's the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ that when you received him, that you became a new creature. So, so we're talking authority for healing yeah. today is what we're talking about, is authority for healing. He has authority over all flesh. He has authority over everything. But right now we're talking about authority over healing. And he called, just to give you some background, he called, and we'll get back to the text in a minute, but Mark's, Mark 10, verse 1, when he called unto his 12 disciples, he gave them power over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. And then in Luke chapter 10, he sent out 70 more to do the same thing. And then in Mark 16, 17 through 18, he's speaking to the multitudes who are around him. And he says, and these signs shall follow them that believe. This is all believers. Yeah. These signs shall follow believers. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it, sh it shall not hurt them. And they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. That's for you. That's for me. That's for all believers. He said it right there. Again, that's, look it up for yourself. You Mark, know what, yeah. Mark 16, verses 17 and 18. Look it up. You know, and when you say that, mm -hmm. I, when you... The way Jesus, his words were that, uh, in my name, in you'll my cast name. them out. And it reminded me of, and I was thinking about it this morning in John 14, Jesus said to his disciples, up until now, you've asked nothing in my name. And in the Amplified, it says, as presenting all that I am. Right, because name, actually, if you look it up, it means character and authority. So a lot of, 
So you're accessing his character faith. and authority. Yeah, is is a lot of entering into this is having a revelation of Jesus. Yes, and his authority and he, character, he, who he is, who he is, and what he carries. Yeah, and <laughs> and you know the the road to that may he may have to take you in a lot of different ways to to get mm -hmm. there. And right. I know mine wasn't. We've got said that in the past, so I won't go into it now. But there is something important to say about it, because if you if you're a born again believer, God is doing a work in you. Right. He's all the while at work within you to willing to do His pleasure. Right? He will use if you if you're unwilling to come under authority. He's going to use circumstances to teach you about authority, to come under authority through situations that you may not like or understand. Think about you know a few weeks ago we talked about Naaman. He was a he had authority, and he did not like the prophet telling him to go wash in a dirty river. But that's because I believe it's because God was breaking off that pride in him, which pride is the root of rebellious, rebelliousness and independence. You know, and, and again, when I talk about my road, and just yeah. briefly, was that I knew Jesus healed, but I didn't believe it for myself, yeah. and I had to be driven again through circumstances to a place where uh, I arrived at the psalm in a place of, of communion with the Lord. It says, when my heart was overwhelmed within me, right. uh, lead me to a rock that is higher than I. Yes. And then he led me to the government will be upon his shoulder yeah. and he'll establish his kingdom with right. justice and judgment. So, yeah. and the, uh, I had, so God has to take you to, you know, through area times of, of just not knowing what's going or not believing anybody right. he'll lead you to that place to that is higher than than you than your thoughts because right. his thoughts are higher and it's not just claiming something no. as much as it is God leading you to a place of revelation yes about himself yes. amen that's the truth right there is progressive revelation of who he is just you know I want to before we continue on because we had a lot of other things we want to talk about with this section of scripture but one of the things in the, that he first said, I'm not worthy that you should come under my roof. I still had faith, but I just want to address if you don't feel worthy of healing. And we may have talked about this in a previous one, but I think it's, it's <coughs> never too many times to talk about it. Sometimes we think that oh, we believe that our sin has caused sickness and disease. Now, sometimes it has, but all you have to do is repent, Rep which means change your mind about the way you're living and turn to him. That's the, and then... It's covered under the blood. That's the bottom line. All your sin is covered under the blood. So you don't use that as a reason to think you're not worthy of him walking with you, of you being able to hear his voice, of you being able to move in the things he is telling us to move in. Right? So it's not about your worthiness. None of us are worthy. We've all fallen short of the glory. But it's about what Christ has done for you. It's about God's love and mercy and his desire for all of us to walk in the fullness of what he is destined for our lives, to bring glory to his name. Sickness does not exist in the kingdom of God. And Jesus said, pray this, one piece of it, your kingdom, your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. <coughs> so there's a desire to see his kingdom established on the earth. Sickness is not in the kingdom. So I'll leave it at that. It's just a little for yourself. If you have not received healing and it's because you don't feel worthy, of him to do that for you. It's not about that. Yeah, you know, it, it reminded me of what, something we brought about uh, the last broadcast, I think it was, about uh, blind Bartimaeus. You know, it says in the scripture, uh, when Jesus had approached and he, he knew Jesus had called him, uh, that there is a description of how blind Bartimaeus took off his garment. Yes. His present way of thinking, his it, old way of thinking. Yeah, it was his beggar's we, clothes. His beggar's clothes. We right. clothe ourselves, yeah. our mindset, clothe ourselves in, in a yeah. mindset. So he had to take that off. Yes. And so I just speak to you today that yes. through the hearing of faith, you're going to take off a garment you've held Come on. that has held you back from believing for yourself yes. and for others. Amen. That That's garment right. is going to be removed today. Amen. Amen. And it's because of God's goodness. Yes. Because when blind Bartimaeus... Jesus said, call him, and he approached him. He, yes. you know, there was a, he could have just gone past by, but because of his desperation, yes. he Amen. called out. And there's going to be a garment removed in all of us yes. today and in you Amen. in going forward. That's good, Carrie. Um, so let's talk about a little bit, how do we think this, the, how did this man get great faith? How can you increase your faith? Right? Now, what Jesus said, if you have faith as the grain of a mustard seed, you can speak to this mountain and it'll move. 
we all have that much faith, right? But but what are some ways that we can increase our well, let's just say it, increase our faith, right? Increase because there is a way. Because faith comes by hearing, and hearing comes by the word of God. That's how it's established in the beginning. You heard something about Jesus. You believe that he can save you, right? That he could save you, he could deliver you, he can heal you. you. Know, before we in a way skip past the mustard seed because okay. Jesus said that and what what I've sometimes when I get to that point where I go well, wait a minute I he says I mean I have a mustard seed of faith because he's given us a, a, a it's his faith a portion yes. let's call it and so you know you can stand on the fact that wait a minute he's I have a mustard seed of faith because I think most all of us do mm -hmm. so you stand there with that and it 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 changes your mind mm -hmm. about yourself, about your worthiness, or how much faith you have. You do have a mustard seed of faith. Just that, the, as a faith, as a grain of mustard seed, that's very small. Why would Jesus say it like that unless he wants to you to recognize that you have that? You know. Uh, and you're talking about, uh, okay, how do we increase our faith? And, we, you know, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. I've had to do that in starting out with uh, believing for healing, just to look in the Bible and go, wait a minute, you know, here it is right here. Uh, and, you know, it reminds me of a couple things. Uh, one thing I'm going to uh, let's say, what Paul said about in Acts 17 11 he said that the Bereans now that was a church an area a church the Bereans were more noble than those in Thessalonica in that they received the word here's the what we try to do with all readiness of mind and search the scriptures daily whether these things were so yeah so he he's he, what he's saying here is that these people listen to what I told them but they weren't sure they believed it. So they looked in the scriptures to see if what he's saying is true. And you, that may apply to you as far as healing. Well, are you sure that he said in Mark, that's why we give you, that's why we tell you. You look in the end of Mark, that he said these to those that, that those that believe, right? Look these things up for yourself, because that will increase your faith. The Lord Jesus is the word. When you start reading the word, he becomes more real to you. And his spirit in you is receiving activation i'll put it that way yeah. it's activating your spirit within you because most of the times we operate out of our soul which is our mind our will and our emotions right so we have the mind of the flesh we have to, we've talked about this before but that which is sense and reason without the holy spirit but the mind of christ is the fullness of the spirit the fullness of god in his mind so you have to when you read the word your spirit will be quickened with the life of Christ that's already in you, but mm -hmm. it will be quickened. It will come to the <clears throat> forefront, which is where your faith is, is in him. It's in, it's your faith is in Christ. That's the reality. Your faith is in him. It's not in yourself. It's not in how much you can do. It's not in how much you can even receive. It's about what he can do. So it's important that we pay attention to what we're hearing. Look it up for yourself and make sure that, that until you, and then notice those things in you that, don't agree with it yeah and i think that this is what uh why <clears throat> one of my favorite scriptures in the word of god is mark 4 24 jesus yeah. speaking in the new king james he said then he said unto them take mm -hmm. heed what you hear yeah with the same measure you use in other words attaching your faith to it right but that comes through hearing so yes. first of all you have to take heed what you hear right with the same measure you use, it will be measured to you. What mm -hmm. a promise. It's mm -hmm. incredible. And unto you who hear, more will be given. Amen. And, Amen. Uh, you know, I just keep, again, I just keep going back to this thing about Brian Bartimaeus taking off that garment that he had on. And that happened when when Jesus had called him mm -hmm. to, 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 you know, he says, call him forth. And he, then he went up to Jesus. And right now in that place of Jesus calling you, and you approaching him, he's going to speak to you. There's there's a, there's a there's an increase of faith. There's an increase of his of his goodness towards you that 
that we all need to realize of how good he actually is. And so we, again, need to take off that garment that we've been carrying. Well, there's a lot of, of garments that, you know, there's a garment of unbelief, right? There's the garment of our old identity, right? That's good. There's, there. there's the garment of, well, unbelief is huge right now, but there's the <laughs> garment of how, how we perceive ourselves and how we perceive, how we think others perceive us. Right. Go there. You may even understand or, or know, you know the scriptures about who you are as a new creature, right? But you're still walking in the old garment. You're still walking as if you're not a new creature, right? Take that thing off. This is, this is a new day. Every day is a new day. It doesn't matter what happened yesterday. Yesterday's gone. Today is where it, that Jesus said, my sheep follow my voice. This is right now. What is he saying? How, who is he saying that you are right now? Put on that garment, yeah. right? And leave the old behind. Just keep going forward. So we have a few scriptures that about healing that we want to like bless you with today. Um, one of my fav favorites is Proverbs 4, 20 to 23. I'm going to give you two that are in the Old Testament. And this is Old Covenant that this was spoken. In the Old <coughs> Covenant, and we have a better covenant, the New Covenant by the blood of Jesus. So how much more <coughs> should this be established in you? So in Proverbs 4, 20 to 23, my son, speaking to you and daughter, attend to my words, incline your ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart, for they are life to those that find them and health to all their flesh. His words are health to your flesh. Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. So let those words, the words of healing, the words of life get into your heart. And it will establish you and it will bring health to your flesh. And then also Exodus 23, 25. And you shall serve the Lord your God and he will bless your bread and your water and take sickness from the midst of thee. Let your life be about serving him. About what does he want? What does he desire? desire what does he desire for your life right now? Seeking him. If you're seeking, serving him doesn't necessarily mean um, having a position in the church. It means recognizing who he is in your life and living for him. That's serving him. I'm not saying don't have a position in the church. I'm not saying don't, don't serve. I'm not saying that at all. But put God first in every moment of your life, in every day of your life, not just on Sundays or Saturdays or whenever you go. Um, so those are two Old Testament scriptures. And in the New Testament, we've talked about these in different, different um, episodes that we've done. Is Jesus healed all who came to him. It's just, his desire is to heal you. You know what? I just got to say this now because I'm hearing it, that that you're going to, whoever's listening to mm -hmm. this, you're going to find yourself in the scriptures. You're going to find yeah, yourself God. in the gospel yeah. story. Amen. There's going to be something yes. to where you're, you'll really identify with something. Yes. That's going to bring clarity to how you perceive yourself, how you perceive God, how you perceive what God wants to do yeah. to you, in you, and through you. But you're going to find yourself in the Word of God. Amen. That's good. In a, in a, a story, a gospel story, wherever. But yeah. you're going to find yourself. Because that's, that's how it works. Yeah. That's good, Karen. Uh, that's good. <clears throat> I read this one. Uh, I tell you, this is a great Old Testament scripture. Bless Psalm 103, 2 mm -hmm. through 3. Uh, again, it's a, just a lamp unto our, 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 our feet, our path. When it says, bless the Lord, O my soul. And forget not all his benefits. Amen. See, there's yeah. there it is. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases. All. And again, that's all. going along with what you said yeah. in all. Proverbs. Attend to my words. Amen. Is don't forget. Yeah. That's attending to his word. That's guarding his word yes. in your heart. Amen. To to stay in faith. Yeah. Uh it is, as you know, it's really important because, you know, Hebrews 4.12 is one of my favorite verses. The word of God is quick, which means living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and the tents of the heart. So God, while God's word goes into your heart, which is what we've been talking about, right? And he discerns your thoughts and intents. And it divides asunder your soul from your spirit. That's why when you read the word, it'll quicken your spirit because it divides it away from your soul, which, as I said a few minutes ago, that's your mind, your natural mind, 
your will, what you want to do, and your emotions, how you're feeling. So the Word of God does that. And I don't need to go into yeah, and you know when you're when you're saying that stated. with the, the power yeah. of the word, because in Mark one twenty one, they yeah. were it says at the start of this gospel he says they were astonished those that listening, yes. uh, they were astonished at his doctrine for he taught them as one that had authority, yes, and not as the scribes. Amen. And again, I just declare to you, you're going to hear the authority of the word of God. Hear it right now, and and see there's yeah. a difference between hearing his authority and hearing his the 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 uh, other voice of rules and uh yeah. oh i gotta do do, do this right. you know the law yeah. the Amen. law That's so the it's my right. my power but when his goodness leads to repent his authority when you hear yeah his authority it does it does what the word of it separates yeah. your old way of thinking and you know it does something i'm just gonna go a little further with that it, it it's not even something that happens up here that's the after effect it goes into you when you yeah. when you recognize his authority when you hear his word right and you recognize it and you see him and you see his authority the shift already happens it happens here but it happens here because it opens you up to see him mm -hmm. in a new way to see him as lord to see him as the highest power right to see him as the one who created you, the one who knows the deepest and deepest thoughts, the deepest, the part even you, the subconscious. Yeah, right. It goes into there and separates. Right. It goes, it tells something that you might not even have in your consciousness yet of how you perceive yourself right. or how you perceive him. It goes in there. We can't encourage you enough to, to read his word. Um, and it, it doesn't return void either. It will always accomplish it will always accomplish what God sends it for, to, to send it forth. Oh, that's one of the most, uh, yeah. Yeah. That's one of the most important things. When you think about this, right. uh, that after you mentioned about Hebrews 4.12, yeah. uh, well, let me just say this only, that he's in, in Psalm 107.20, yeah. really goes along with this picture, what happened with the centurion. Mm -hmm. and it, says, it says, he sent his word and healed them. Yes. And deliver them from their destruction. Amen. He Receive said it, that. And I'm going to say it again. Receive yeah. that. Receive this he right sent, now. He sent. There's a sending going yes. out. There's a sending. There's an anointing on the on the sending of His word. Amen. His word. There's yes. an anointing on His word, and it's being sent to mm -hmm. you, to heal you, to give you a revelation of Him and of healing, and Amen. to deliver you from your destructions. Yes. From your destructive thinking or behavior. Uh, or the destruction that's ha taking place in your cells because of cancer right, okay. or because of, of any kind of infirmity, any kind of illness, because of that destruction, because the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. So Jesus comes, and he is the word, and he comes in when you speak his word and receive that into your cells, the very cells, the very DNA of your body. He goes into that place. That's where the healing takes place. And he delivers you because he says, that I have come to destroy the works of the devil. Jesus said that. I don't know where it's found, but he said, I could come to destroy the works of the devil. The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But I have come to give life and that more abundantly. So receive that life today in your the depths of your being. Yeah, because in it, Jesus' it, name. It says that, uh, you know, Jesus says, I am the light of the world. And uh, that light dispels darkness. That's right. And the en here it is. The entrance of your word mm -hmm. Brings is light. brings light or is light. See, light, yes. light. When you think about uh, them healing now with laser right. light, so they yes. have, they they've discovered, and that's the word of God is a, light, a lamp unto you, a light yes. that when Amen. you receive that engrafting word, it's able to heal and save you to the uttermost. Amen. Amen. Let you leave with that. Well, I'm going to just leave it. with oh, with one more. One. Okay. The Isaiah you had mentioned it, but mm -hmm. I, I just an incredible. Yeah scripture that is at Isaiah 55 11 says so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth mm -hmm. it shall not return unto me void Amen. but it shall accomplish that which I please and it shall prosper in the thing 
whereto I sent it. Amen. Isaiah 55, 11. Amen. There's hardly any greater promise yeah. or description of the power of the Word of God. Mm -hmm. And I just leave you with that. We leave you yeah. with that and to declare that there's been a deposit. Yes. There's been a sending of His Word and a yes. deposit that is going to prosper you in the way and why He has sent it to you this day. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 God bless you. We'll see you <clears throat> next time.